The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmed will be the one ruler of the Romans. Cry aloud and spare not. Show my people their sins in the house of Jacob their transgressions. Now Christians, they major on the minors. They omit the weightier matters and focus on the microscopic issues. Like, for instance, they love talking about pedophilia. Now, pedophilia is a white man's term. It's not Bible. According to the Bible, there is no age of marriage. Now, let's go to 2 Chronicles 24 and 1. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibia of Beersheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoadai the priest. And Joadai took for him two wives, and he begot sons and daughters. Now this boy was seven years old. And this boy was given two wives. And in verse 2 it said that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, would the white man allow a seven-year-old boy to be king? No. Would the white man allow a seven-year-old boy to get married? No. Would the white man allow a seven-year-old boy to marry two wives? No. But God did. You see, God and the white man is different. God's laws is not the white man's laws. And that's the problem with us people, okay? Especially our people, our people are so stuck on whatever the white man says. The white man says something and they say, yes, master. Yes, master. The white man says this and they like, yes, master. Yes, master. They do not believe the Bible over the white man. And it's called indoctrination. According to the Bible, the age of marriage is not that important. Now, all through the Bible, God tells us, do not commit adultery. Do not worship other gods. Now, those are the weightier matters. Those are the most important issues. Now, if the age of marriage was so important, God would have put it in the Quran and he would have put it in the Bible. But right here, we have a seven-year-old boy who is king. Now, a king can do whatever he wants. And this boy had multiple wives and he was married at the age of seven. Now, today in our culture, that's not flying because whatever the white man says is Trump law, okay? But according to the Bible, it is not, okay? God is not threatened by the things we are threatened by. We love focusing on the minor microscopic issues. Christians major on the minors. You know, Christianity came from the Pharisees. Paul was not only a Pharisee, but he was the son of a Pharisee. And the Pharisees majored on the minors. Now let's go to Matthew 23 and 23. Woe unto you. That means destruction. Scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, for you pay tithe the mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have done and not to leave the other undone. You see, Christians, they focus on the minor things. Don't you know that idolatry is a serious sin? How could God judge the world of witchcraft? When the Christians are committing witchcraft every day, how could God judge a bunch of young people in a circle with a star when Christianity is running rampant with idolatry? It's all through the church. Let me tell you something. Christianity is established on idolatry. Now, God has no sons. 
Well, let's just say he had a son. You mean to tell me that son is God over God? It makes no sense. Christianity is so stupid. When I process it with my new mind, with this new understanding, I understand that Christianity is one of the most wickedest religions on the planet Earth. Okay, so we focus on the minor issues and we omit the weightier matters. That's what Christians do. Why? Because Christianity came from a Pharisee by the name of Paul. And what's so bad is the Christians don't realize that if you was to Google the age of Mary when she had the prophet Esau, they will tell you that she was probably about 12 to 16 years old when she had the prophet Asa. Now, this is common knowledge amongst the scholars, but the Christians don't study. They let their pastor study for them. They let their camp leader study for them. They have ignored the studying of the Bible. Their Bible is full of dust bunnies right now, okay? You will have to blow the dust off just to read it. Another thing, here we have a huge issue, and it's homosexuality. Now, some of the Christian church, not all of them, are promoting gay marriage. Now, we have a story in the Bible. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for homosexuality. Homosexuality was a big deal. But then after he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for homosexuality, here we have Lot laying with his daughter and the younger one. God didn't destroy the world for that, but he destroyed the world for homosexuality in that day. So there you have the balance. God is not tripping about an age of marriage because Lot would have been the first person for his fire to fall down upon. But it didn't fall on Lot and his daughters, okay, which would be pedophilia. His fire fell down on those faggots. And that's the real truth, okay? You got to deal with it. The church is not balanced. The church has falsified the weights. The church is dealing with a false balance of the judgment of God. So according to your own Bible, homosexuality was greater than what you call pedophilia. Moving on. Also, they don't acknowledge Paul as they daddy. Now, there's many scriptures that say in Christ, in Christ, we're rich in Christ. All these scriptures, in Christ, the gift of God, faith, in Christ, in Christ, all these things that are in Christ. But guess what else is in Christ? The Bible says, Paul is your daddy in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to show you a scripture that's been in your Bible this whole time to show you the significance of of Paul in your religion. Paul is your father. Jesus is the son of this two God, two golden calf, this father and son cult religion. Now let's go to the book of Acts. This is going to be the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you? Now, he didn't say Peter I know. He didn't say Thomas I know. He didn't say John I know. Okay, the spirit said Jesus I know, because he's the son. And he said Paul I know, because Paul is the father of of the Christian church. Now it's in your Bible. Why are you in denial? Why are you denying your daddy, okay? It's in your DNA, okay? Paul is your father in Christianity. There is no way to hide it. Now we got some Christians saying, Paul is awesome. And we got some Christians saying, you know what? Paul ain't my father in faith or anything else, but they call themselves Christian. Don't you know Paul gave you 13 letters? Don't you know Paul gave you all the teachings in Christianity? He overrode the law of Moses, okay? He stepped into the office of a rabbi 
Because he's teaching you things that Christ didn't even teach you. Okay, Paul was the master. He was the father of the Christian church. And all of you who are in Christ Jesus, you are his kids. Okay, that is the truth. Y'all have no reverence for Paul. According to the Bible, if you go by Paul's theology, he was the last messenger. He believed that he was the last person seen of Christ. So all of you little Christians talking about you had your little Jesus dream. That stuff is false. Because Paul said he was the last person to see Christ, okay? Let me tell you something. Paul believed that he was the prophet of Deuteronomy 33 and 2. That's why he calls his church saints. That's why he was in Paran, okay, which is Mecca. He was in Arabia before he went into Damascus and before he met up with Peter. And Peter's place was taken by Paul because Paul was greater than Peter. Paul was like John the Baptist, whom Jesus spoke of. He said, John is greater out of all men born of a woman. John is the greatest, but he said, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven, because that's all Paul talked about, he didn't talk about hell, is greater than he. Now, let's get the scripture where Paul says that he is the least. This is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Okay, so Paul is telling you that he is the greatest because Jesus said whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. And Paul is a picture of John the Baptist, the man with all the churches. John was in the wilderness. Paul was in the wilderness. Paul was in a relationship ministry. John the Baptist was in a relationship ministry. John the Baptist was in prison. Paul was in prison. John the Baptist was wearing camel's hair. And Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. John the Baptist was beheaded. And so was Paul beheaded. And his ancestor, King Saul, they all was beheaded. Okay? Now, the Bible tells us that Christ is in all the scriptures. But see, Christ isn't the only one that's in all the scriptures, okay? There's more prophets besides the prophet Isa, okay? And in the Bible, we have multiple references of one who was greater than he, and that is the John the Baptist, and that is metaphorically going into Paul. You see, Paul was the Pharaoh, and Jesus was the Joseph. All throughout the stories of the Bible, you see the spirit of Christ and you see the spirit of Paul. Look at the story of Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Ahab was the true king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was just the king of Judah. Okay, so when Ahab was killed, they said the king of Israel was wiped out. Although Jehoshaphat was the king, he was not the king of all Israel. He was just the king of of one tribe and that is metaphorically going into how the prophet Isa is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslim only. You see the story of Isa is seen in the life of Joseph. Joseph was stolen out of the land of the Hebrews and he was put in Egypt. He was under another religion, okay? And he was up under Pharaoh. He saved Egypt he didn't save Israel. He saved Egypt. If you wanted corn, you had to come to Egypt. It's safe to say that Joseph was the Messiah of another nation and of another people, just like it is with the prophet Isa. He is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslim only. Now, this is seen over and over through the types and shadows in your own Bible. And if you open up the Quran, it tells us, that the prophet Isa is the Messiah. So Paul said that he was the least, indicating that he was the greatest. He tells us over and over in Romans, Philippians, Ephesians, even in Galatians, that in Christ, in Christ phrase, 
that in Christ phrase came from Paul. He is the only one that talks like that. Why? Because the religion of Christianity is the pair. It is the parable. It is the pair of balls. It is the two golden calves. It is the father and son religion. It is the curse of Canaan. It is the curse of rebuilding Jericho. It is the religion that serves two masters, okay? Now, you have a choice to make, okay? Jesus told you, you can't serve two masters, okay? You're going to have to pick one. You know why? Because God is still jealous. God is a jealous God. How God going to share a throne with his son? Even if he did have a son, how he going to share a throne with his son? Look at the story of David and Absalom. Look at the story of David and Adonijah. All his sons was trying to take his kingdom and they failed. God is not going to allow anyone to have his glory. He tells you in Isaiah, he will never share his glory. Okay. God is not going to share the throne with nobody. Okay. That's why in the nation of Islam, we have the right perspective of God, that he is not to be associated with any partner and you can't take lords in addition to him. He is Lord. OK, it is to him we will all return. So we see that right here, the Christians are the ones who are majoring on the minors all day. They talk about Aisha, Aisha. There's no scripture in the Bible where there's a certain age for marriage. If it was important, God would have put it in there. No, you just following up under the white man. Whatever the white man says, you go for it. The white man says jump and you say how high. Why? Because to you, the white man is God. That's the sin you struggle with, okay? That's why we are in a place right now, okay, where the white man's kingdom is coming down. You see, there came a man from the nation of Islam a long time ago. His name was Mehmet II, Mehmet the Conqueror, and he conquered Constantinople. And what has happened in the past will happen again because there's nothing new under the sun. There's coming a day when the Romans, when the Christians will lose the kingdom. There's coming a day when the prophet Isa will return to a world ruled by white people and he will destroy the cross, that old rugged cross. He will destroy their religion. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. True, true, true.